we have been given the keys to the Adidas studio here in Brick Lane, London. We're going to debunk their running range and tell you which shoes you should be wearing if you're a beginner, if you're running marathons, which ones are best for 5Ks, 10Ks or half marathons. What does a carbon plate even mean? I'm Gabs and behind the camera is James. Let's go check it out. Too bad, thank you. We have got an absolutely mega competition for you. We are giving away five pairs of shoes to five lucky winners. Any of the shoes in the video you are about to watch and all you have to do is comment below and tell us exactly why you think you deserve a pair of these shoes. We will be picking our favourite comments so make sure they are good. But now let's go and check out these Adidas shoes. Let's work our way through each of the shoes and find out which ones you should be running in yourself. Let's start with the Adidas Supernova. These are kind of your gateway into the running world. Super, super comfy, probably more for your beginner runners. These are gonna really help you to kind of be comfortable on each run, whether you're doing short runs as a beginner, you know, that's like your probably couch to 5Ks, going up to 10Ks. They are gonna be super comfortable underfoot as they're very cushioned um, and they kind of give you a bit of stability too. So perfect if you're just actually getting into running yourself um, and not too worried about smashing out PBs and just getting it done for now kind of not for a race day, so they are not a race day trainer. They're actually pretty plush and quite comfortable around here. You can see all kind of like the padding around here. Uh, the foam, as I said before, is gonna kind of give you a really comfortable feel underfoot. They are pretty durable as well. So again, um, if you are just kind of getting into running and you're starting off like one, two days a week, these are gonna last you a pretty long time. Let's take a closer look. So on the sole here, we have got a boost heel and that kind of is really good for heel strikers. And um, so it will kind of absorb the impact, just making it a really plush run. Let's move on to the Addy Stars. Okay, so the Addy Star, the ones I had on walking into this place are not just a casual trainer as they might look. Uh, these shoes are probably a little bit misunderstood because they do look so casual or so street, but they're actually really, really good for long distance running. Um, so let's go into the details a little bit more. Obviously you can see that these have got super thick soles here and that makes them really good for long distance runs or you know if you're training for something and want to get in your base miles you're not going too quickly just getting the miles in the legs these are what the Addy Star are kind of made for so think recovery runs long slow runs base miles that kind of thing um, and you know they're, they're kind of a little bit more of a step up from your beginner shoe but they're not quite your race day shoe either so they're not for your you know your really really quick miles so they are a little bit heavier than the supernova that we just looked at but that is because they have got this huge big cushioned uh, sole on the shoe and that will just kind of really give you a really plush feel over those long long miles that you're going to be running and you can even see that kind of in the tongue here that's pretty thick so that's going to be really comfortable on the uh, top side of your foot and all around the ankle here you know that is that is pretty cushioned in there as well um, so yeah made for long distances these are also the first shoes in our lineup that actually have the Continental outer sole um, and Continental are well known for making tyres and basically rubber in general and what it means is that they're going to be really super super grippy especially in wet conditions um, but also really durable um, so yeah as I say this will just make it I know I've said it a million times already but particularly good for those long slow base miles these shoes are also really good uh, stability shoes so if you're a bit of an over pronator these will kind of uh, help you with your running and even if you are more of a, a neutral runner chances are that at the end of a long run or really slow long race your um, form is going to be dwindling a little bit and that's where stability shoes can really help you out as well So we've just looked at the Addy Star, let's move on to the Ultra Boost. So the Ultra Boost is another shoe that looks very casual, but is in fact a running shoe. And it was in fact the first shoe designed with the Boost Foam. 
It features in a lot of the Addy range now and it has been around for so long because it is just that good. It combines uh, cushioning and responsiveness in the midsole, which is why it's just so great for running. Onto the actual Ultra Boost shoes themselves though, they are actually designed for like your 5Ks, your park runs, those type of shorter, probably quicker runs. Um, and actually the 2022 version of the shoe was kind of designed with a female first focus. So for women, by women, specifically for women's feet. And that was before the men's range of the shoe came out as well but they are not your complete beginner runners, um, but they're also kind of like not your pro level. So they're somewhere in the middle there. The boost midsole itself does make the shoe a little bit heavier. So it's not super, super lightweight, but by no means will that slow you down. Um, it just means it's a little bit more cushioned underfoot. So again, you're gonna get a really comfortable kind of stride when you are running. The upper of the shoe is basically one continuous piece of material, so it feels a little bit sock-like when you're putting it on, but basically it's not got a super plush tongue, but it is quite lightweight material around the top here. Just feels really nice and like it kind of fits to your foot, like encapsulates your foot really nicely. Again, like the Adi Star, they are gonna be super, super grippy. Um, they're also gonna be really, really durable. So if you are kind of in that range of not quite a pro, but not quite a beginner, you're probably gonna be running a few, three times a week maybe. These are gonna last you um, for quite a while. I just think they look really cool. So like, say if you're running at seven and then going out for drinks at 7.30, you could rock up in these, no one will ever know. Speaking of going out, let's move on from the Ultra Boost to the Solar Boost, where it gets a little more serious. So let's go take them for a test run. So I've just taken the uh, Solar Boost shoes for a run and it is actually pretty clear to me that they are for more advanced kind of runners. Um, this is because they just feel really, really responsive. So probably a really great race day shoe. And that's because the sole has obviously got the Boost technology as the name suggests, but it's also got the LEP system which just makes it a bit stiffer underfoot. It's also really great for stability because of this LEP system. So that just, again, makes it really great for race day. So if you've actually been kind of looking at the Solar Boost online to buy yourself a pair, you might have also come across the Solar Glide shoes. Um, we actually have also been looking into this, obviously, to make this video to see what the difference is between the two because they do have a lot of similarities. Here is the Solar Glide itself and as I say, they have got a lot of similarities but there are a few key differences too. The Solar Glide is more of your workhorse shoe which means you can kind of wear it every day um, for all your different training runs as opposed to kind of wearing it for more of a race day shoe. The main difference as well is that this shoe is a little bit heavier, around 30 grams in fact, which won't make a huge difference um, on your training runs and essentially that is why it is more of a training run shoe or a recovery shoe as well. So this Solar Glide, similar to the Solar Boost, does also have the Boost midsole, but it also has the LEP system as well. What this basically means is that the Boost will kind of give you that floaty feeling and the LEP will kind of give you that responsiveness underfoot. That this combined together will give you a bouncy but stable ride, which is perfect for those recovery runs, those training runs, any type of everyday run that you're gonna be doing. One noticeable feature on the Solar Glide is that the heel counter isn't solid the entire way around. So it's solid here and here, but in the middle, so this is the bit that kind of is surrounding your Achilles, uh, this bit's actually a bit, little bit soft and squidgy. So it will lock your uh, Achilles and your heel into place, but for anyone who does kind of suffer from uh, issues in this area, it's just going to make your runs a little bit easier and you less prone to injuring yourself again. So that's this Solar Glide overview done. Let's move on to the Adios 7. So the Adi Zero range, compared to all the other shoes we've looked at so far in this video, are just completely different, mainly because we will start to lose all of the plushness. This is super, super thin, like mesh material. So thin, in fact, you can actually kind of see your fingers through it. 
um, it's just less cushioned around the outside and the upper as well and this will just kind of really work towards that performance and fast fit. The Adi Zero range is where we actually see the boost midsole material dropped from the shoes and we move into the Light Strike Pro Foam. Whilst the Boost Foam is great for your training and recovery runs because it is super, super durable, the Light Strike Pro Foam is actually the lightest and most responsive foam or midsole that Adidas have ever created. On the Adios 7, the Light Strike Pro Foam, which is this kind of yellower kind of material here, is found at the forefront of the shoe, whereas the back of the shoe is just the regular Light Strike Foam. So they're not just your race day shoes and they're not just training shoes. You will find them more towards like the scale of your race day, but you can still wear them, as I say, for your tempo, for your really fast runs when you are training as well. Um, because of this, this is a little bit more durable at the back. These are gonna be absolutely great for anyone wanting to go out and smash those PBs. So the Adios 7 do have a smaller stack height than the rest of the Adi Zero range, which we will move on to shortly. Um, but it also does have a torsion system in the sole. The torsion system is essentially the bit that's gonna propel you forward and it's kind of your entry level uh, propulsion. So nowhere near as quick as your carbon or your energy rods, but it is a step up from your LEP system uh, in the Solar Boost and Ultra Boost shoes. And if it were me who was lucky enough to be a winning a pair of shoes today in this video, I think it'd be these ones that I would be choosing. Don't forget to get your comments below and tell us why you deserve a pair of these amazing shoes in this video. So next up in the Adi Zero range is the uh, Boston shoe. We've already spoken about going for PBs with the Adios 7, but if you're chasing a marathon PB, so going for a really, really quick time, then the Boston might actually be for you. You can see the difference between the shoes pretty quickly. Uh, let's, talk, let's just even look at the stack height here. The Boston has a much bigger stack height, which is just gonna be a little bit more plush over those marathon or long, really long distance runs. Um, and it's also the shoe where we really start to see the Light Strike Pro come into its own. So compared to the Adios 7, the Boston has a lot more Light Strike Pro foam, which is then followed by just Light Strike EVA. Essentially, the more of this awesome good foam that you've got on the shoe, the kind of quicker, more responsive it's going to be, which is going to really push you towards those PBs over the longer distance. Seeing as we're already talking about the midsole, let's flip it over and have a little look. As you can see here, there are some carbon infused energy rods and these are just gonna give you that extra boost when you're running. This shoe is essentially like the first step in going towards your pro style shoe. And as I said, they're gonna really, really give you that boost over the marathon distance if you are shooting for that PB. Because it is designed for your marathon or your longer style runs, you do actually start to get a little bit of the plushness back around the heel. So that's just also gonna really keep your heel in place as well, uh, which will help you avoid injuries, which is a big one for everyone. But similar to the Adios 7, the side of the shoe here is still really, really thin. And again, you can kind of see my fingers through the material. Um, and that's just gonna make it super breathable as well. So your feet aren't gonna get all too hot and sweaty when you are running these long races. Because they are just a little bit thicker on the stack height and have got a little bit more of that light strike foam, they are probably going to be a little bit more durable than the Adios 7. Um, so again, although we are saying about wearing these for your marathon day race, they can be used, again, similar to the Adios 7 in your tempo runs when you are building up your marathon distance training. Uh, just because of the stack height and the amount of kind of uh, foam in the sole, even though it is the lightest foam that Adidas do, they do come out a little bit heavier than the Adios 7. So just one to note there. So just to recap, really great for marathons, really great if you're shooting for that PB, great if you're an age grouper, all round great tempo run shoe. Next in the Adi Zero range is the Adios Pro 3. Altogether, that's a little bit of a mouthful, but let's just have a look at them because they already, even just looking at them, look super, super quick. I mean, they are so lightweight, and I can tell you now, just like by feeling these, they are the lightest shoes that we've had in the collection so far. Um, I don't know the exact weight of them that will pop up on the screen shortly, but they are just like ridiculously lightweight. 
That is probably because of the fully Light Strike Pro midsole. That is the entire length of the whole shoe here. Um, and it's also got quite a big stack height. So similar to the Boston 10, they've kind of upped it from the Adios 7. So a little bit thicker, but yeah, just super, super lightweight. And as we know from me previously mentioning that this is the lightest foam that Adi Adidas do. One thing to note about these shoes is that the Light Strike Pro, because it takes up the entire like length of the shoe and you haven't got any kind of other midsole on here, it's not the most durable materials of all the midsoles that we can get. So these shoes should really be saved for your race day. These are gonna be super, super quick, but yeah, you don't wanna be wearing them all the time because they will wear out a little bit more quickly than some of the other shoes we've already spoken about. So if we move on to kind of the outer sole here, you can see that it is made from Continental, but it is the thinnest layer of um, outer sole that you are gonna get on the shoes. So this will be very grippy, um, and Adidas, and I quote, will say that their shoes are as grippy in the wet as most other shoes are in the dry. So we can also see that embedded in the shoe are some energy rods, so again, these are going to give you a really good energy return and really propel you forward, which is probably why these shoes are the winning shoe for the 2021 World Marathon kind of rankings. These shoes won the most marathons that year. So that just kind of goes to show how quick they are. So definitely not for your first time kind of marathon runners, unless you are actually aiming for like a two and a half hour marathon on your first go, good luck with that. These shoes are the ultimate long distance road running race shoes as they are just super, super quick and they are pure bread for athletes and your really quick runners. And whilst the stack height might give you a little bit more kind of cushioning underfoot, the rest of the shoe is not plush at all. Going back to your very, very thin kind of material here, similar to the Adios 7. So the final shoe that we are going to be covering today, and in my opinion, the most ridiculous ones on the list are the uh, Adidas Prime X. These shoes are just, I mean, just look at them. They are got a massive, massive stack height. So this massive stack height is made up of heaps of the Light Strike Pro foam as well as carbon rods. And we've even got a plate in the forefront of the shoe here as well. These three things combined are going to make the quickest shoes. And it is actually why they are also not fully race legal. But that's only for the pros. For the likes of me and you, or anyone running particularly quick marathons, these are gonna give you that extra, extra edge when you are absolutely going for it, like running a hoolie. But one thing to note with these shoes is that if your running form is not particularly good, they don't offer a lot of stability. So, you know, you could end up kind of rolling your ankle quite easily with these. And rolling your ankle in one of these is gonna feel like falling down from a pair of stilettos. These are the type of shoe that you are only going to wear on your race day. You can feel when you put these bad boys on that they are super, super spongy, but that the, obviously the front with the plate here, it really does just give you that ultimate toe off as you go. As far as cushioning goes, this shoe literally has none. There is pretty much nothing around here, around the heel, around the tongue area at all. It is a very, very thin material. And again, you can kind of see my fingers through it. It is that thin. Just a little recap, Prime X, they are not for pros because they are not race legal, but they are for the really quick runners out there who are going to smash some PBs. Don't need too much stability because the form is on point. If you've got any questions at all about any of the shoes mentioned in today's video, then just drop us a comment and ask us and we will do our best to answer. And also, if you have not already done it, do not forget to enter our competition because any of these pairs of shoes in the video today could be yours.